Mix Ray Ray and welcome back to another Watercolor Wednesday. So I don't know about you guys, but I have been feeling particularly nostalgic this last week or so. Um, it started even actually with this painting and then it sort of just spiraled into other medias like right now. Um, I don't know if any people who are my age via millennials will remember this, but there's a 70s movie that was an animated cartoon called Raggedy Ann and Andy, the musical adventure. So it was more for like my sister who was actually born in the seventies and everything and actually had a Raggedy Ann doll. But I used to watch it as a kid and the songs are stuck in my head now because I used to watch it so much. Um, but what, how this painting inspired me or inspired my brain to be nostalgic is because I decided to do a little bit of fan art. Um, this piece itself is technically almost almost um, fully replicating this screenshot from Legend of Zelda's Majora's Mask. Um, and I don't know, I just thought it would be nice. I haven't ever successfully drawn or painted Old Force before, so I thought it would be good practice in anything and also um, this particular panel that I am painting with my Himi gouache set on is actually a normal canvas panel but I had put in I had put in I had put two or three layers of watercolor ground on it um, so it is watercolor absorbent and I had made a couple of these a long time ago and I never really gotten around to using them because I was scared I was gonna mess it up because you only get so much watercolor ground when you order it and I was kind of scared a little bit to ruin one of them because you can't just erase watercolor or gouache or anything um, but I thought you know what if I wanted to make them I need to use them you know because I've also been sort of experimenting with the well not experimenting I've been messing around with the idea of making my own watercolor paper um, that one is actually probably a lot more doable doable than the other idea I keep having which is making my own watercolor paints um, that one requires equipment that I do not have the money for but if you want to make your own paper it's literally just you can start with a blender, some water, and recycled paper or paper you don't want to use anymore. And you can make it from there as long as you have like frames and some window screen that you don't want or can use anymore. Um, so I've been experiment, I've been not experimenting, I've been messing around with the idea in my head and figuring out what I would need to make my own watercolor paper. And it turns out when you hand make paper, it is not the same as just like making it thicker to make watercolor paper. Um, the thing that makes watercolor paper special is this thing called liquid sizing. And it is basically gelatin mixed with, um, I think the, I think the chemical was called aluminum sulfate. It was something to that extent. And what it does it if, is if you put it on paper, um, it makes, the paper less absorbent to water so that way if you were to paint on it with watercolor um, it wouldn't it wouldn't soak into the paper as much and it would more just dry on top of it um, and so I saw into my research that if you put this in with your water or your paper pulp when you're making paper you can also essentially just make your own watercolor paper or you can just make the paper as normal um, with handmade paper and put the sizing on top of it but I figured if I have watercolor ground already I can just use that so I was ex so this is pretty much the first time that I'm using watercolor ground um, to paint on as a sort of experiment for me this is where I'm experimenting um, sorry, my um, stand that my mic is on went wobbly and then I got a call from some unknown number that I am ignoring because if I don't know it, who, why am I going to answer anyway? But 
Um, where was I coming from? Right, so this particular panel is one that I made myself, like I said, with watercolor ground. I think this one specifically, I have two of them. I have one that's white and then one that dries transparent. Um, I think the transparent one is a Daniel Smith and this one is the Core Q-O-R watercolor absorbent ground. Um, I like I like the feel of them when I'm painting. Um, this panel in particular has more of like a cement looking sort of layout rather than like cold press paper um, because I had scraped it on with a palette knife and I didn't necessarily add water because you can add water to the ground to make it thinner so you can spread it against paper better. And this one actually has a bit of a, a tug to it when you like are sketching and painting so it can feel like um, rough or cold pressed paper um, but because I put it on with a palette knife and it was basically just scraping sem semi scraping against it it had more of a, um, of a cement texture to it which I kind of actually like um, but yeah this is me halfway done I believe I don't actually no I am a third of the way done because what I also did um, as I was experimenting on this panel is I used up well I didn't use up but I used all three different gouache brands that I currently own the majority of it was um, Hemi the Hemi gouache but um, as the thin first layer that you guys saw me do that was actually my Reeves gouache because even though I said I don't like using it I can at least use it as a watercolor um, that was actually how I was first using the Reeves gouache because I didn't realize that it's not gouache isn't exactly like watercolor you can't just put a little dab of the paint and then fill the whole thing up with water because then it's not that's about as thin as the gouache can become but when it's a first layer because um, I realized I do really like like um, working in a layered setting with the gouache um, it's sort of the same as when you were working with oil your thinnest layers go on top first and then you gradually just use less and less water as you are painting or in oils case thinner um, so that way um, each layer dries a little quicker than the one on top and the colors won't muddy and mix together as you are painting and layering your painting um, so yes I use the re oh, I'm trying to get rid of my Reeves gouache by using it up so I figured if I can use it as thin watercolor like first base layers that is an easy way for me to use it up um, so that's what I use the first layer this um, Hemi gouache that you're seeing me put everywhere that's the main layer and then um, you'll see in a little bit that uh, I have to stop saying um later as highlights and everything I will be using some Arteza metallic gouache that I have um, I bought that sort of just for me separate from the whole YouTube channel um, because I really liked the idea of metallic gouache even though um, I didn't buy the 60 set because I didn't think well for one when I was looking at the 60 set of gouache from Arteza I was like wow that's a lot of gouache I don't know if I can use all those colors so you know I got the watercolor ones instead which you know are still sitting in a box waiting for me to be used because I can't figure out how to use them all properly I guess just by painting and experimenting but I feel like in order to use them all up I'd have to use a really big canvas but that's if you know my idea of using them up is all in one sitting or setting or painting which seems wasteful so I'm not gonna do that but that leaves me to think of other ideas um, The re okay, so um, to the subject of the painting, 
it is pretty much just Epona, and then you'll see um, with accents, I'll draw some of the fairies from The Legend of Zelda too. Legend of Zelda is my favorite franchise like ever when it comes to a video game. I love it so much. I don't, I can't articulate why, but it's mainly because of the story and the characters and like the whole forever battle against like good and evil sort of thing um, that I find really intriguing. It actually is what got me into video games as a child and became my first obsession. It was a first and quick obsession and then I slowly went to TV as most do because people said I needed a break from video games. But then I went back to video games and then I went to college for video games. So it all kind of worked out. Um, but yeah, I didn't want to do a full like shot to shot remake of it. It was sort of just mostly inspiration and trying to get like the figure of the horse done right. Um, I guess Epona technically, but I, I just felt like, you know, I haven't, there's nothing wrong with doing fan art. I feel like it would be really nice to do. Um, so I'm going to start doing that as like part of like the genre of what I paint for a while. Um, not for a while, like it's not going to be only fan art, but so if you want me to do some suggestions on like video games or TV series or cartoons or whatever to do fan art of, let me know down in the comments and I will consider and do some sketching and work things out on paper and maybe you'll see them in the future. But yes, okay, so I'm getting to the accent part, which was actually really fun. Um, this is actually going to, my voiceover is going to end in like a couple of minutes. So I know I'm getting to the end of my voiceover. But yeah, this was... There's, yeah, so there's nothing wrong with fan art in particular. I had a whole series on my gaming channel before I went to like a major hiatus all about showcasing um, artists and their fan art and like giving them encouraging little insights to like how I enjoyed the work and everything and letting other people enjoy their work. Um, it was like a whole like live stream showcase sort of of it and it was really fun and it kind of helped me get um, into wanting to do art myself because I was just like this is so good I wish I could do this and so you know when you wish you can paint you have to practice painting so that's what I did um, so I was I'm kind of happy that I painted this. There's are obviously some things when you first like draw something you're not used to that you wish you could change and look back in and back at and like fix. But it's that's all a part of like the learning process of this. I as for what it's worth, I really like um, my detail work and how I painted all of the fairies. Um, being all glittery and everything, and I gave the quote-unquote Epona horse a bit of a glow around them because since Link isn't in there, there's there, you only have to focus on the horse. Um, and since I'm not tech, it's not technically Epona. While I was painting this, I was like going back and forth whether I wanted this to be actual fan art or not. But if I'm using Legend of Zelda as my screenshot reference then yes, it's pretty much fan art, especially when I don't change a lot of the dynamics in the painting from the screenshot. So I am getting to the end of this voiceover really quickly. So um, as far as this goes, let me guys know how you enjoyed the video. Um, if you see any sort of like little inconsistencies that I'm doing that maybe you hear me complain about but I don't know how to fix, please let me know down in the comments below. This is a learning experience for me just as much as it is you guys and feedback is always appreciated. Um, but as far as this goes, I think I'm pretty much done. 
So thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. I really, really appreciate it. And I'm just going to stop talking until the video is over. So have fun and stay safe.